Go. And welcome to Same Night Seduction TV, the SNS TV that you've been uh, wanting to see. Exactly. <laughs> the P3 show, P to the 3. Here we go. Today we're going to be talking about some of the myths. We're going to be taking down some of the sacred, holy cows of the pickup industry, the whole seduction community. There's a lot of things out there that are being taught as if they are gospel truth, and we think it's kind of bullshit. So we're going to be attacking a lot of those... Uh, not necessarily attacking, let's use the word debunking, a lot of the myths that are out there. Um, but before yeah. we do that, just a quick note, I just wanted to make a little announcement about Epic and I being in New York for a couple weeks uh, at the end of this month and the beginning of June. And if you guys are in that area or if you want to go to that area, we would love to be uh, giving you some Same Night Lace training there. So um, let me just give you some links really quick to the conferences that we're going to be speaking at. Uh, the first one's going to be the Global Pickup Conference, and the, now be forewarned that the link here that I'm going to send you to is kind of annoying with the music that comes on, so I'm going to send you to the speakers page, um, <laughs> so you don't have to have that annoying uh, song come playing when you should be listening to us. Yeah. And then uh, the next one that we're going to be going to be speaking at is the um, dating conference, the new NYC dating conference. That is the following week, and here's the link for that. Cool. And, oh, son of a... That's what this webcam max. It uh, stopped working. Although I guess uh, you can still hear us. We'll just do this. All right. All right. Okay. There so we go. We'll battle. We'll do this. Use yeah. One. All right. So, does that work for you guys? Sorry for any inconvenience. But once again, we're going to be speaking at those conferences. We are going to be giving out some of our best advice. We're going to be revealing, com in it, pretty much in its completion, the uh, SNL matrix. But we're also going to be taking guys out in field with us while we're there. We have basically two weeks to be there, and we want to get you guys getting same night ladies consistently. Um, we're going to be bringing our video jacket, our in undercover uh, high-tech spy cam, getting infield video of you so you can get the feedback that you need. Also, we'll be bringing our in-ear mic so that you can have my melodious voice telling you exactly what to do to get her in the sound. Oh, mine. You never know. Who knows? It could be and either. Uh, which is fun. And the funny thing about the, the microphone, because it's a little spy microphone that fits in your ear that uh, Nobody no can one see. can tell because it's a little wireless CIA type thing. And it's so much fun to play with, but at the same time, it just takes a certain kind of guy to actually be able to use it. Mm -hmm. Because what we don't want to do is have some guy in set, and we're giving him a lot of great advice, and he's talking to a girl. It's like, hey, you look so, so cute. You, <laughs> you have a serious naughty side. I, <laughs> and then he gives her a hug. So uh, if you are going to, if you do want to use our in-ear microphone, if you're taking live coaching from us, uh, we want you at a certain level. We'll, we'll practice it a bit. Exactly. Just so that you don't uh, stop talking when we're talking to you. <laughs> and we have seen guys do that, and it's kind of weird. So um, we want guys that are at the level to use that, and if not, no big deal. Uh, the other stuff that we're going to be showing you is so fucking advanced and so... Um, it's kind of funny because it's, on the one hand, it's very intricate, but on the other hand, it's really simple. Yeah, and to answer Babu's question, if we're starting doing boot camps again... Uh, not really. Not really. I mean, off and on, if someone uh, will come out here, then we will. But as far as these uh, two weeks we're going to be in New York, then, yeah. So, so we're, we're going there, to be there anyway. Might as well. So, uh, And we're going to have a uh, special discounted rate. So if you're interested, if you're going to be there, talk to us. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if you guys are going to uh, attend the events also, mm -hmm. cool. Um, apparently there's going to be some awards. So I'm not saying vote for us, but... Yeah, I will. Vote for <laughs> Okay, so, let's dive right into the myths. All right. Actually, and we have a whole bunch of them. I want to show everybody. Here's a list that we just uh, brainstormed and came up with off the top of our heads. I'm sure you can't read that, but just rest assured, there's a lot of stuff on here that uh, myths in the seduction community, stuff that is, a lot of them are uh, ones that are... It's bugging me now. Highly, uh, there we go. 
are yeah. highly common. Like, a lot of people believe them. People have been uh, talking about these things and t acting like they're the gospel truth. Mm -hmm. But there's our experience, which says that these things don't work. And then there's also just the scientific studies. And we look into these things. They don't have. There are no studies that uh, show that the human brain, especially the female brain, works along these patterns. Exactly. And so um, we hope we get through all these today. We may or may not, and if we don't, we'll br bring them. We're not getting through all these. Yeah, today. exactly. I'm going to so disagree with. We will probably. <laughs> I, I know we're not going to. So we'll probably uh, be talking about these for the next couple of weeks and just going through them and really giving you the the scientific reasons a lot of the times, or at least the logical reasons why these things are complete hooey. So let's start off with the first one. The first one is pre-selection. Um, this is one of those fucking holy cows out there that nobody seems to want to argue against, but here's the deal. Pre-selection has a minimal, at best, it's, if it has an effect, it's very chaotic, it's unpredictable, you never know which girl's going to respond to it, and, well, alright, think about it this way. If you're in a club, and she's got all done up, she's took two hours to do her makeup, do her hair, get all dolled up, and she's out there, she's shaking her ass, she's on the dance floor, she's up on a little, uh, well, a, not a proverbial, a, a real pedestal dancing. She's up on, on a box dancing. What do you think she's thinking about? She's thinking about you coming in with a bunch of girls? No, she's thinking, do they notice how hot I am? How hot am I? She doesn't give a shit, she's in her own world. I'm getting a text message over there, so if you hear any silly noise. Um... So there's one example of how pre-selection is just pointless. She's not paying attention to you. She's too wrapped up in her own world and whether people are thinking she's hot. She doesn't notice that you came in with 20 girls. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, the example of, what was it, like two nights ago we went out and I was wearing our undercover video jacket mm -hmm. uh, just so we can get some, some more footage of Nick because we're just trying to build some of that up. And what we usually do is we just sit there, we talk and joke, and then he finds a girl that he wants to talk to and I just kind of stand nearby after that and I film them and the way the camera works is it shoots at an angle so I'm not facing them I'm facing slightly away and I've got an in-ear monitor so even though I'm 10 or so feet away I can hear everything that's going on so I went in to talk to these girls and I went off and got in my position I was just looking a different direction just like I was some weird guy standing there and these girls said what's up with your friend how come he's just staring at the pool <laughs> And it amazed us, because this is the first time in all this, the m many, many times we've done this, that girls figured out we were together. Mm -hmm. Now, it's pretty easy if people were watching us, because we're sitting there, we're talking to each other, and all of a sudden, we split off, and he talks to the girl, and I go. Now, even though we usually have this conversation, which one, that one, okay, and we're talking within five to ten feet of these girls, and then start and move off, this was the first time ever that mm -hmm. girls notice that we're together. Mm -hmm. and, and we've even gone out with girls with us, so you know, if they were actually paying attention to us, they would notice that, hey, there's some guys there with a bunch of girls with them. And, oh, what, wait, why is this one here? And the other ones, that, aren't you with those guys that are you know, off? The, no, they don't pay attention. Now, here's another thing about pre-selection and why we're bringing it up is that, well, it's hit and miss. What if you're doing this to a girl who just got burned by some guy? She had been dating him for a while, and she turn, turns out the guy was a player. And now she's really pissed off at guys that go around and sleep with lots of girls like we do. But, you know, when you rub it in her face that, hey, yeah, look at me, I've got all these girls around me, oh, you're next, she's going to be like, mm, nah, I'm, I'm not into that right now. So it could be a negative thing. Um, a further problem with it is, what is that kind of sub on? Let's say she does pay attention to you. She mm -hmm. notices that you've got 20 girls around you. So you have 20 girls around you that don't want to fuck you. And she's thinking, hmm, all right, well, there's 20 girls around him that don't want to fuck him. Why would I want to fuck this guy as well? Think about these things, guys. Um, now, there is a difference between, I think, pre-selection and what I like to call the eliminate factor. Um, the eliminate factor is when you get two, three, four girls that are all interested in you in one room. And this works better outside of a club, outside of this works in social circle stuff, or if you have met a bunch of girls, maybe you've gone out, you screened for logistics, found a bunch of girls that weren't logistically able that night. So what do you do? You invite them all over to your place at the same time. 
bite them all over. This has turned into threesomes. This has turned into orgies. This has turned into at least some fierce competition because they're all interested in you. They all want to get with you. And the fact that there are other girls there, they try even harder. If you've ever seen that crappy show, I think it was the late 90s, early 2000s. It was called Eliminate. And what you would see on the show is, and, and the more interesting episodes were the ones with four girls, one guy. They would sometimes do five or four guys, one girl. Those are boring. So you get these four girls that were competing after one guy. And the guy would usually be a total tool, and the girls would yeah, be generally pretty, pretty hot. And they would fight to the bitter end to win him, even though, like, normally they probably wouldn't give a shit about the dude. And yet, it was funny, because the girls would get eliminated, and the first thing they say, oh, I didn't even like him anyways. And I'm thinking, just a couple minutes ago, you were, like, standing on your head with your panties hanging out and singing uh, Old Susanna to him. That's You didn't really want him? Why were you doing all that shit? Yeah, so that's eliminate factor, which is very different very from pre-selection different. because you have multiple girls competing. Mm-hmm. So really, with pre-selection, people saying it's the be-all, end-all. If you go to any reasonably large-sized club, uh, you can, girls were not going to know if you just walked in the door if you've been there for an hour or two. So uh, people that say that is the be-all, end-all. I mean, let's say, I, as you said, sometimes it can help a little. Mm-hmm. But there are so many better things that you could be yeah. doing than worrying about pre-selection. Here's another problem with pre-selection. Um, let's say, for example, we're going to be going to New York City in a couple weeks. I don't really know any girls in New York City. I've been to the airport once. never really been to New York City. So if uh, pre-selection is all that important, that means I am fucked. I am fucked. And, and not in a literal sense, in a metaphoric sense, obviously, when I go to New York because I don't have any girls that I'm going to be bringing because I don't know any... Uh, no, that's just ridiculous. If you have the skills necessary to pull same night ladies, you're going to be able to do it whether you're bringing a big group of girls or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, AFC Old Man says, at least I assume it's AFC Old Man, maybe it's AF Cold Man. A- <laughs> AF Cold Man. I think I'm going to call him Cold Man. I'm going to call you Cold Man. Cold Man. Uh, so you say you have no advantage when you're surrounded by chicks and they're all laughing and you make mad eye contact with a chick and then cold approach her. I'm not saying there's no advantage to it, but let's say that on you know a scale of one to one hundred, like your percentage chance mm-hmm. of being able to sleep with this random girl. Say some girl sees you uh, surrounded by girls who are laughing, and then all of a sudden you walk out and cold approach her. Maybe you're you're gonna go up by two, three percent. It's a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Now if you just cold approached her anyway and said something like, uh, "You look like you have a naughty side," or you pull her away from her friends and put her hand on your erection. That is going to give you a 50 to 60 percent increase. Exactly. So the, all that work you did of getting all these girls laughing, and then you leave that group to talk to someone else, it it doesn't help you that much. Exactly. And also, I mean, you're obviously assuming that she noticed that. Chances are she didn't notice that. She didn't notice that all these girls are sitting there laughing. She was once again too busy looking at or think worrying about how hot she looked. All right, and I think uh, Pineapple PUA, he summed it up completely. We said, seriously, you want to spend like three hours working in the room to get social value, whereas you can just spend that time trying to get laid. Thank you. All right. <laughs> well put. All right, All right. let's move on. We move on to the next Myth one? number two. Myth number two. This is the myth that she will approach you. Like, if you do certain things, if you have the right mindset, this girl will come and approach you. And, and I've seen this. I've seen this. Per- uh, propagated by a lot of, uh, especially inner game type guys, but there's this conception that every time I see it, I want to punch certain gur- gurus in the face. I'm not going to name them right now, but maybe I will later. They keep saying, yeah, you know, what I do is I go out and have the right mindset, and then the guru, she comes and approaches me. Guys, if you're not approaching, you're not getting laid. Yeah, and so, I mean, we'll read these lay reports. This guy, it's like, I saw her, she saw me across the room, and she just walked over. I just, what I did is this special technique where I looked into her eyes, and I was subcommunicating a whole bunch of stuff. Anytime you read a lay report or a field report where a guy says that he subcommunicated something with his eyes and a girl approached him, I can pretty much guarantee that person made that story up because yeah. it does not happen. Yeah. Um, let's give a few exceptions to this. And, mm-hmm. and we're going to give some serious caveats to this. Um, okay. And c- basically because it ties into a myth that we're going to talk about in a minute. But, okay. Say you go out wearing an outrageous outfit. That that might be a situation where you can get girls to approach to approach you. I wish uh, I had the ability to flash some old pictures of me, or maybe even pictures of me from last Halloween. Um, 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Just bring some of this. Okay, here we go. Bring some of this out. Okay. We're going to uh, change things up a bit, guys. All right. I got my big goofy hat. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, put that one on. And w why not grab a boa while you're at it? Okay. So, all right. You're about, yeah. Guys, you're about to be seduced. Okay, so, here we go. If you go out dressed like this, and we've got, to, oh, yeah, we've got more. So, here we go. Here so we go. Say you, uh, you walk into a bar dressed like this. Uh, there are some women. Th th they'll definitely come up and, and approach you. For they, they will uh, approach you, and they'll say, what's going on? Mm hmm Now, and uh, you might have a few seconds of conversation, and you might be thinking, wow, these women are talking to me. Uh, note, note on a clipboard, scientifically, how many times you get laid. It will be zero, because you're a clown. A clown walks into a, into a bar, and you'll have a lot of people talking to him. You have dudes walking out, like, dude, you're dressed like a clown. What about, I'm going to buy you a drink. What about that guy that we saw just the other night when we were oh, recording? Oh, yeah. We're going to have to bring up the... the we do have infield footage of this guy. Uh, there's no sound, but we did get uh, some infield hidden camera of this guy. We see him all the time. He's at excess. Oh, uh, last week... I look silly. Yeah, you look there silly. Oh, okay. now you look much better. Yeah. So, this guy was at excess. He was wearing sequin pants, um, a sparkly jacket, boxing uh, gloves over his shoulders. It, it just, none of it made any fucking sense. And a big beret. With a big and beret. That and had a like crazy a big moustache. Uh, and he was old. Thing on it. Yeah, he was a really old guy. And, you know, I mean, that, and the old part is not, a, is not a problem. What was the problem is that none of it made fucking any sense. Did he have girls approach him? Yes, he did. Have I ever seen, and we see this guy every time we go there. Have I ever seen him talk to a girl for more than five minutes? No. Have I ever seen him leave with a girl? Fuck no. Um, you know, it's a novelty. They might come up and approach you for a second, but there comes a point in the interaction where she realizes, holy shit, I'm talking to the fucking uh, chicken man. Or, yeah. in the case of last year for Halloween, I wore a costume that was so awful that even on Halloween, and even with the skills that I have, even I couldn't pull it off. It was horrible. And as much game as I have, and as much as even some of the girls wanted to continue talking to me, at some point she realized, holy shit. Okay, here's, here's what I was. I was a giant sperm, like a super sperm, and I had a sign that said, the pill, not my choice, that kind of thing. Okay, I, th I thought it was kind of amusing. It turns out, uh, the second I walked in, I realized this was a bad mistake. Mm -hmm. There were girls that approached me, sure. There were girls I talked to, but at some point they realized, holy shit, I'm talking to a giant sperm. And one of them even told me, she's like, I like you, you are the most fun guy I've met all night, but my friends are over there looking at, I, I gotta go. And that was the best I did that night. Yeah, so, and so like taking uh, the example of this guy that, who wears the boxing gloves and the fur coat and the really tight sequined uh, pants, he had people coming up to him all night mm -hmm. to ask to get their picture with him. I mean, he's, you know, he thinks he's social, life of the party. But he's a joke. Yeah. And yep. if you go in wearing stuff like this, you'll be the joke, too. Yeah. So girls might come up and talk to you, but uh, this whole peacocking idea, if it's anything outside of the realms of fashion, like if you can't legitimately get away with wearing this thing, mm -hmm. I mean, there's like there's like being the cutting edge of fashion. That you can do. Yeah. If you're wearing like a really nice jacket that just fits well and uh, just a shirt with some interesting patterns on it, nothing too outrageous, but something that looks nice, like you, you take care of yourself, that's what's important. Mm -hmm. I mean, here's the biggest thing, if, and when it comes to fashion, think about it this way. It has to make sense. If you're out there wearing a chicken head or a, uh, you know, boa, you paint your nails, that kind of stuff, it has to make sense. Are you a computer programmer? Why are you out wearing that? That doesn't make any sense. It has to convey certain things about your identity. If you're out wearing it, it has to make sense. Sure, yeah, you can get away with wearing ridiculous shit like this if it's Halloween, uh, certain special occasions, sure, it, it'll make sense. But if you're just doing it just to go out and do it, it doesn't make sense. And sure, girls will come up to you, but you won't be laying them. Yep. And uh, Sizzle Dizzle, talking about the Count Chocolate costume, that's also a good one. <laughs> that one I did uh, pretty well in, because Count Chocolate isn't as ridiculous and uh, well, weird as the giant sperm. Exactly, and it was, Halloween. it was on Halloween. I was wearing Count Chocula on Halloween. Yeah, if you were wearing Count Chocula tonight, that'd uh, just be weird. be getting late. No. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that wouldn't be a bad <laughs> that idea. That would be horrible. All right. Well, before we uh, Should we go? Before we take off our clothes, let's 
let's stay in this uh, costume and let's talk about Negs. Since, oh yes, uh, since Negs. Wearing We're this and Negs seem seems to go to together. Go. People that for I'm some reason, hat right now. for some reason, people that dress uh, like this and do Negs are the same people. So we'll talk about. I, I, that. I'm not sure exactly why. All or right, maybe not the chicken hat. Well, <laughs> I don't I know. Maybe, chicken hat, but I'm going to leave on my boa. Maybe if you had goggles on the chicken hat. Okay, let's talk about the myth of the neg. Here's the thing. There, there we go. I like that. Yeah. Okay. So, the myth of the neg is this, that her value is up here, and so since, you know, she's a hot girl, you need to bring her down here so that she's on your level. Now, what? think of the thinking behind that. Thinking is that she is above you. And really, do you think... If Brad Pitt or George Clooney or any of those kind of guys, Colin Farrell, I don't know, you name it, even older guys, I don't know, I can imagine somebody like Sean Connery or, I don't know, uh, Bruce Willis, they're older gentlemen. If they approached a woman, do you think that they would ever think even this 18-year-old uh, hot girl with big fake tits was above them, they needed to neg them? I don't it know. It doesn't. And here's the, the underlying psychology of it is the problem. And the thing is, it's close enough, and uh, negging, you know, it used to work, it still works in some circumstances, mm -hmm. but it works for the wrong reasons. Right. I mean, the famous post when, uh, uh, what's his name, first brought up negs uh, years ago, he, it, that was his example. A woman is going to be up here, and you start the interaction down here, what you need to do is just show that you're disinterested, so she assumes you're here, and then also pull her down a few notches, and you're going to meet in the middle. Mm -hmm. What that assumes is that women who think they're uh, too good for you need to realize that you don't care about them and so you're just unattainable. Mm -hmm. Now, negs do work because there is a sense of a girl chasing a guy will attract that woman to the, to the guy, mm -hmm. which is what we call baiting to invest. Yeah, if you exactly. bait a girl to invest, then yes. And so if and so the only way negs work is if some guy you know drops an egg, it's like, yeah, you're... Uh, the hair looks nice. Is it real? Is it a horse yeah. hair? We <laughs> what? <laughs> and uh, and she starts to justify it. She starts telling him, no, no, this is real hair. And I go to the barber. The neg works not because he took her down a few pegs. It works because he said this short thing and didn't put much energy into the into the interaction because that's uh, typically how negs are supposed to be done. Is you just it's like a short little fire thing. You don't give it no emotional charge and then you drop it. So. So you do this little thing, and then she comes back with some story. That's what works. It's not the neg itself. I mean, it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't have to be subtle neg. And blah, 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 blah. It could just be that I say five words here. And then she comes back with a paragraph. She's invested more in the interaction, and that's going to build attraction, not so much this neg. And the neg can definitely backfire on you because... I've seen so many guys that just start insulting girls because that's mm -hmm. what they think they need to do. It's it's such a fine line between insulting and doing a proper neg. Um, and also, think about this. It, it also assumes that she's more important than you. Mm -hmm. Does a cool guy really think that she's more important? No, he doesn't give a shit. He's there. He's just having fun. He's not going to go there and try to show that he's not interested. If he's interested, he'll say he's interested. Sure, he might tease her a little bit. Sure, he might get her, as he said. He might bait her into investing. In fact, he will do that. But he's not going to have to feel like he has to insult her and knock her down a few notches. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, I mean, we can go on about that, but I think we made we the point. Probably, that, yeah, we uh, go on all night really on how silly that is. Really, insult a girl. Don't try to do a neg. It's not helpful. And, heck, Actually, you can do the complete opposite of it and do a lot better. Yeah. Compliment a girl. Compliment her. Uh, and just, when you compliment her come from a place of non-neediness, and I think that's the biggest problem, is that most guys uh, felt like they had to neg because they were coming from a place of neediness, so they thought if they said these magical lines, it would make them come off as not needy. Mm -hmm. here's, a, here's a shortcut. Just don't be needy. And uh, Lucifurious says it's actually okay to make fun of them, but no insults. Yeah, teasing, teasing. teasing is totally perfectly different. all right. I mean, that's a different thing. A teasing is having your words say one thing while your body language says another. Like, I'll pull a girl into me, and give her a hug and say, you are so awful, we would never get along. Let's uh, do a shout out to Race. Hey, Race! Race, what's up? Yeah, we do owe you fondue. Glad to see you on the show. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Add humor, though, if you feel comfortable. Uh, we're, we're not... These what, hats aren't silly enough. These are... This is a serious discussion, Race. Very serious. We're being very, very serious. serious right now, talking <laughs> about getting laid. This is the most serious thing ever because it's about... Uh, 
uh, reproduction and getting exactly. your genetic, ma genetic material out there. Into the future. And that's the foundation of life. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about another thing that's also, since we're talking about negs and peacock, also another stupid myth, and I, I think this one's been thoroughly debunked by now, going indirect. Now, there are certain situations mm -hmm. where going indirect is preferable. Say, for example, she's there. Yeah, these things are getting fucking hot. All right. You get the point. Um, Very hot. Oh, um, I also had two neckties on underneath that. See, that's awesome. That's uh, the that's okay. part of sex you didn't even know. It's going indirect. Uh, the idea is that you don't want to convey interest. Well, think about this. Why wouldn't you want to convey interest? Would Once again, would Brad Pitt have a problem <laughs> conveying interest? No, he wouldn't. The problem is that most guys went in conveying interest when they were needy, creepy, or weird. They were just needy and wanted her approval and all that. But you can go in and show interest, and you know if she's interested, she'll show it back. And if not, no big deal. The biggest cause of last minute resistance, and if you guys have heard that term where she freezes up at the last minute, which I don't ever really get, um, th one of the biggest causes is going indirect, pretending like you aren't interested in her for a while, and then all of a sudden, hey, uh, blah, 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 oh, hey, dick. Of course she's going to be like, wait, well, what? I thought you just want to be friends or whatever. Um, it's, it causes last minute resistance in that way. So, guys, try to be more direct. Not try. Go out and be more direct. Tell them that you're interested. Oh, and Johnny Soporno. Hey, how you doing? On behalf <laughs> of needy, creepy, and weird guys everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and as a matter of fact, I remember distinctly, it was uh, about a month or two after I first read the game and I was g getting into it. And uh, those of you who heard my story, I was doing okay with women. I read the game and thought, wow, I can get it even better. And for six months, I got nothing. It just, my results went <laughs> horrible. So I was out there. I was peacocking a little bit. I was out with my friend who's uh, uh, some guy I met who's a member of the community. We're trying to get some girls. And I run across one of my friends. And this guy, I mean, he was just wearing like a plain T-shirt and jeans. But this guy's a natural, and I knew that. And, uh, and naturals are not so good at uh, the opening, but I knew this, I've seen some of the girlfriends this guy had, and I knew he was great, and so many girls love him. And so he walks up, and he hears about this, so this game thing, I want to learn about that, that seems pretty cool, I'd, I'd like to get better with women, and I'm like, aha, now I'm the one who knows more about women than you, <laughs> the type, things have changed. And this uh, acquaintance of mine, this girl walked up, and so me and uh, the other guy doing the mystery method, we, we ship into pickup mode, and we start, uh, you know, doing our nags, little things, and my natural friend just turned to her and said, hey, you are ridiculously hot. <laughs> and so, <laughs> me and the, uh, the mystery guy, we tell, no, 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 that's the wrong thing to say, no, it's wrong, and he's like, what? And uh, guess who she ends up talking to, him. Mm -hmm. And it, because, I mean, he, he started off by saying, you look ridiculously hot, he's never met her before, and it turns out that he was just so comfortable with himself, he wasn't being weird or trying to do some technique like we were, and uh, he came across uh, very genuine. So The biggest thing behind that is just the mindset. He's like, I know this girl, she got all dressed up, she did put all this effort because she wants to get laid, here I am, I'm going to appreciate her in a way that doesn't say that, you know, I really give a shit. He's not needy about it, whereas everything you were doing to try to pretend like you weren't needy kind of signaled to her, all right, they're up to something. And let's also admit, girls have watched the pickup artists, they've heard of the game, that stuff is played out. It's totally played out. Yeah. It, it's, it's cliche now. It's, you might as well go up and ask her, hey, what's your sign? It's going to be about the same cliche factor. Yeah, pineapple PUA, direct like, damn girl, you fine. I would put verbs in there, but other than that, it's, it's a good idea. Yeah, I, I, wouldn't, uh, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't... I wouldn't phrase it that way, or... You know, say it the way he did. I wouldn't deliver it that way. But you can go up and say to a woman, you know what, you're really cute. And just <laughs> leave it at that. I like dropping a compliment like that and just holding it. Why? Because once again, it baits her to invest. Uh, that's pretty funny what Johnny Zaporno just wrote here. My sign is exit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I do? Like, when girls ask me my sign, since I don't believe at all in astrology, which hopefully you guys don't either, but he's like, so what's your sign? Neon. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, really? Uh, I'm not familiar with that. I, so many times have girls not get the joke. And I just move on. I don't make fun of them because uh, I'm still trying to get laid. But uh, neon, that's a good sign, too. I also, uh, I, I, do, I do the standard guess. 
And then whatever she says, oh my god, how did you know that I was a Scorpio? What about me gave it away? Now this is another way to bait her into invest. All of a sudden she starts giving you all these reasons. Then I can kind of tool with her a little bit like, I'm just kidding. I, I don't even know what sign I am. <laughs> so, um, that's a total side note. Uh, and uh, let's, let's see, let's get back to one of the questions we had a little bit ago about humor. Because uh, we're talking about mm. humor in this broadcast. Right. But what about using humor in set? That's actually a great myth. Mm -hmm. um, okay, here, here's the setup for the myth. If you ask any girl on the planet what she looks for in a guy, what does she always say? Sense of humor? Sense of humor. Sense of humor. And they always say sense of humor. And if that were true, you know, because apparently guys like Brad Pitt, George Clooney, and those guys are fucking hilarious. Yeah, because girls love their sense of humor, but guys <laughs> like Carrot Top and... Uh, well, Carrot Top's kind of unfair because he's not funny, but... He's, he's got a sense of humor. Yeah, it I is a so. sense of humor. We, we call it that. But yeah, I mean, t what are comedians always uh, joking about? The fact that girls don't ever like them. If, if it was really that big a deal. Okay, now, let's, let's uh, decode this a little bit, though. What does that mean? I think girls actually do like a sense of humor. The problem is, their sense of humor and a guy's sense of humor are, you got guy's sense of humor over here, you got girl's sense of humor over here, they're nowhere near, what you say to your guys that makes them giggle and laugh and fucking slap their knees, girls just kind of look at it like, huh. The stuff that you would say to a girl that would make her laugh and giggle and all that, you say to a guy, you look at you like you're fucking retarded. For instance, Dane Cook is chick humor. Yeah. Pretty much all his stuff, it's, I mean, if you try to look at it by the sense of jokes, like set up, punchline, tagline, uh, you know, build, build around a premise, like, you know, Jerry Seinfeld or Dimitri Martin or Daniel Tosh or any of those other comedians. Any do. good comedian. <laughs> yeah. Look at uh, Dane Cook. He's just talking about premises and situations that are just kind of funny. And girls like that sort of thing. So, <clears throat> the, uh, so what that is about humor in set, and... This is one of the things that I've struggled with, because I'm a stand-up comedian mm -hmm. on the side, and so I thought, hey, I've got a great sense of humor, and a girl would say something, I just, boom, that makes me think of a joke. The biggest thing that I can say about Epic is when he starts going into his comedy routine, so all of you guys who are funny out there, the second he starts going into his comedy routine, that's when things start fizzling. Yeah. It's entertaining for me. Yeah, I, ha I have more fun when I'm being funny, but and even it when just they're laughing takes, at it, it takes a very a different kind of girl to mm -hmm. be attracted to that. So when I want to get laid, I tone down the humor. Mm -hmm. And I might do chick humor, or I'll tease her, and you know, and it's just about setting sexual frames. And the thing is, while I'm making jokes, uh, humor relieves tension. And so if you create a lot of sexual tension, then you make a joke about the sexual tension, you're letting it fizzle. Because humor is a great way to... Uh, what do people do when they're nervous? They laugh. Speaking so of fizzle, things that rhyme with... Fizzle like sizzle and dizzle. Sizzle and uh, It says, how do you use humor if you are the most unfunny Jew out there? You don't use humor. <laughs> you don't need it. Uh, when, when women say that, they always say that because it sounds awesome. It's better than her saying, I like a guy with a big dick or who knows how to get me off or is comfortable with his sexuality. Women can't really say that, um, yeah, I like a guy who really makes me wet um, when, they're, when they're taking these surveys. But... You know, if, if a girl was, you know, doing this secretly, I guarantee a guy who makes her really wet versus a guy who makes her laugh, who's she going to want to bang? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, obviously, the, the guy that makes her really wet, not the guy who makes her laugh. Uh, All right, Gaga so said she wants a big, I'm just going to say, cock, whatever that was. Yeah. Yeah, Johnny Soporno, who's on here now, he can talk about uh, size queens because tech working yeah. in the porn industry, he knows, as you said, he, he's told us the story about mm -hmm. so many girls say, I'm a size queen, I need a guy with a big dick or I can't get off. And he says, actually, what you need is a guy who knows how to use his dick. And uh, they have more fun with a guy who has an average size dick that knows how to use it than some mm -hmm. guy who's bottoming out. Yeah. And maybe we'll have to bring Johnny back on the show uh, in a future episode again because... He's always full of good stuff, and I'm glad he's on the show today. Um, should we do one more? Let's do one more, and then we're going to close today uh, out, or this week's episode out. And let's just pick one from here. And then next week, we will continue on. We've got tons of these. What do you think? Um, <coughs> let's see, maybe looks don't matter, or MPUA is a flawless game. Let's do looks don't matter. Looks don't matter. Here is the 
here's the myth, big fat stinking myth, that looks don't matter. When your game is good, your looks do not matter. And that is a steaming turd. That is horseshit. Looks do matter. And I, I'm sorry, and I don't mean to offend anybody here, but I, it's a, I, I'd be offending myself because I'm not a very attractive dude. Epic here, on the other hand, is a quite attractive dude. Now, yes. here's the thing. Looks do matter. Um, think of, once again, why uh, why uh, people, you know, maybe Brad Pitt's a fucking miserable douchebag. I don't know. I've never met the guy. But girls still fantasize over guys like him. I don't know. The thing is, your looks are going to affect her perception of you. They are going to affect her initial, I'm going to use the word attraction, even though I don't like to use it. But actually, I do like to use it in this situation because that's what attraction is to me. Attraction is basically just her primal instinct, like, yes, this guy. And it usually has to do with her, your physical appearance. Um, and there isn't too much you can do about that. Um, obviously, go out, uh, get a better fashion sense, get in shape, do all that kind of stuff. But other than that, you're born with the looks that you're giving, and deal with it. Now, that being said, does that mean if you're an ugly dude, you're fucked? No, because if that was the case, I'd be fucked. <laughs> and not in the literal sense. Um, basically, what it comes down to is that if you are an uh, unattractive guy, you get a lot bigger leeway. Um, you could make a lot more mistakes. Um, you could be, I mean, think of that Brad guy, you know, your little man crush dude. Oh. <laughs> Why don't you tell about him? Uh, it's this guy, and for some reason, he just latched on to me. He's a good looking dude. Mm. And uh, he met me one night at a club, and he pulled me into a. Then he like came out and grabbed me. He's like, "Hey, I'm with this girl who has a friend. Uh, help me out. Can, do you know how to be a wingman?" I'm like, "Uh, I, I could probably do that." So I go in. Twenty minutes later, I have already left. I'm out the door with this girl. I end up sleeping with her that night. Mm -hmm. The girl he was with, he screwed up with, it, but uh, and it fizzled. And then he went home alone. At the same time. But at the same time, yeah, he was so good looking that this girl that he screwed up with. Who was ridiculously hot, by the way. Extremely hot. Yeah, I mean, she's uh, she's, a TV, she's a TV personality, so she's mm -hmm. definitely hot. She was so attracted to his looks that, despite him being a complete douchebag to her, she contacted the girl I was with, who contacted me, and then I had to figure out who this guy was so I can get the phone number back because this girl that he messed up with wanted to talk to him again. So, and then he they ended up talking and he screwed it up just because he was a little bit uh, he was really needy and creepy and weird but he was so good looking that she was got willing to forgive most she, of that she went and did some investigative reporting to get his phone number afterwards so yeah looks don't matter in the sense that uh, you can always improve your game mm -hmm. and an uh, ugly guy with, uh, with good game is going to do better than a pretty boy like this guy it's who was just a complete douchebag however Saying that looks don't matter at all is, is a complete lie. It's you're kidding yourself. I mean, uh, I mean, there's a sense like there's a certain a level of ugliness of a girl that I don't care how good her game is, uh, you're not going to sleep with her, mm -hmm. and everyone's got their own level of what they'll accept. Mm -hmm. And uh, girls are pretty much the same way. They're more flexible as far as looks go than men. But to say that it it doesn't play any role is complete horseshit. But at the same time. Just uh, don't make as many mistakes. That's pretty much the only key that I've got going for me is I realize that I can't make as many mistakes, so I just don't make as many. And I do just as well being a rather homely guy. So, I don't know. Let's leave this on a positive note. Because um, uh, we, uh, we need to close out this episode. But we will be back, and we have 15-plus more myths to debunk. So, next week... Look forward to us uh, debunking stuff like, oh, what do we got over there? Uh, mentioning game with a girl. Mentioning game or with a getting girl. a girl every time you go out because master PUAs have flawless game. Some things work on certain girls, not other girls. We're, we're going to go over all of these. It's going to be awesome. Um, inner game, that one again. But uh, I feel like we're beating a dead horse with that one. But um, anyhow, that being the case, guys, thank you for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you next week. Um, also, one more time, I'm just going to give a quick plug. We are going to be at these dating conferences, so guys, show up. Also, um, book your tickets for this, but also get some infill training with us there. We're not really doing this as much as we used to. 
So, yeah, so, it, the, so it's, it's maybe your only chance to get it's, SNL It's the training jewel and the prize of getting our uh, live training because we're moving away from that because uh, guys do get laid and it's really rewarding, but man, it's exhausting because we exhausting put person. everything into it when mm -hmm. we go out with a guy. Uh, exactly. Just, I mean, we can't drink, we can't hit on women, and we end up going home alone unless, uh, well, unless we can get the guy to hook up with a girl sometime early in the night, then we mm -hmm. got an hour to play ourselves. But exactly. But until a client hooks up, we don't hook up. So, yeah, we, uh, I don't know, we like hooking up, so... <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we got into this thing in the first place. Exactly. So, um, we want you guys to hook up, too, and that's why we do all this, but at the same time... Well, so I think yeah, that's enough it. for now, and we're glad to have you with us. So Say goodbye, Tweak. Growl, <laughs> growl. <laughs> like you do. Okay. <laughs> all right. Get out there, guys.